Hi everyone and welcome to this lecture on road safety audits. My name is James Reynolds and one of the many hats that I wear is Senior Road Safety Auditor. Um, so I'm going to start with a little bit of an introduction, start talking you through what a road safety audit is, audit is and why I'm talking to you about them. Um, first of all, a bit about me. Well, I am a Senior Road Safety Auditor and one of the things that I did in my in my career is work for a small roads a small consulting firm and spent quite a bit of time in the um, early 2000s doing uh, road safety audits as a um, road safety engineer, uh, road safety auditor, um, probably well over 200 of them and um, these days I'm still doing a couple a, a year um, in amongst various other things. Uh, it's one of those things that you try and keep your accreditation fresh and um, yeah probably a little over 12 months ago um, I was out doing a road safety audit somewhere in the countryside and um, yeah, you found this uh, this little bit here where they've been doing a whole lot of works on the road and you can see they've actually filled in um, to build a bit more of the uh, shoulder here and unfortunately they've, um, they've uh, covered up the fence post but they've left a rather large amount of fence posts sticking up and so you can see if anyone came off the road there and crashed into that thing, uh, it would be a potential road safety hazard. Um, and so as a road safety auditor, part of my role on that job was to come out and have a look. And that's one of the things that I found that needed to be fixed. Um, so this presentation structure, I'm going to take you through what a road safety audit is, why they're undertaken and how they're done. And then in the second video, I'll um, give you um, some examples. And then in class, in a workshop, we'll also hopefully be doing some form of activity where we'll actually have a go and undertake a road safety audit ourselves. So first of all, what is a road safety audit? Well, there's a guide, uh, the Osroad Guide, which is fantastic. Um, it has the formal definition, so formal examination and in which an independent team reports on the crash potential and safety performance of something on the road. Um, so the key thing there is both it's a formal examination and that it's an independent team. So you don't road safety audit your own project. Um, you go and get an independent team and they come in and they look specifically at your project, your site, whatever it is that you're doing that you want audited and they look at it specifically from a safety background. Uh, safety perspective rather. They're looking really just at whether this uh, this thing that you're doing or the thing that you have on the road is potentially unsafe um, and they're not really worried at all about bad budgetary or project constraints because they're independent and so it's a fresh set of eyes and they're not worried about budget. I mean yes sure some of their recommendations will take into account the fact that it might, would be very very expensive to fix some road safety problems that have very low crash potential, but they're not sort of tied up in the constraints that you typically find when you're doing a project or when you're building something. Um, so yeah, uh, the Austroads Guide to Road Safety is the key reference material for this lecture and for doing road safety audits. Um, I would definitely recommend you get a hold of the copy and have a quick read of it. Um, one of the things that you need to do before you do a road safety audit is also do a road safety audit training course. Um, you don't necessarily have to do one if you're doing um, an, an audit uh, informally or anything, but if you want to be some sort of um, qualified auditor, you'd need to do a course. Um, a road safety audit is not a check against design standards. This is not a design standard review. Um, it's not checking to make sure that your design has met the appropriate engineering standards. Um, it's, not, it's not a check on your designers. Um, although, of course, it is sort of an independent audit, um, but we're not looking specifically at design standards and whether you've got exactly the right number that you should on a horizontal curve or something like that. The reason for this is that because of, just because a road meets the standard doesn't mean that it is necessarily a safe road. In fact, um, we don't really talk about something being safe and unsafe. We generally talk about things being being made safer because safety is very, very difficult to fully guaranteed. And so um, there, there's um, standards are not necessarily solely based on safety. Um, they're often the minimum thing that you have to do. Uh, this is particularly an issue in bike lanes where there's, there's always a number there that says the minimum bike lane width. 
And you can imagine that if we have the minimum bike lane width, width everywhere, we'll end up with a whole load of bike lanes that aren't really all that safe. Um, whereas ideally, the we we sort of should be using standards more as a well. This is the absolute minimum. If we absolutely have no question, no no possibilities of changing things, but we'd be hoping to be doing our design our designs over in the desirable widths in those standards. Um, and there, of course, standards don't always necessarily apply to every single situation. Um, so here's an example from um, out near Packenham. So the standard for a local collector road in that particular municipality um, is to have a 6.6 .6 metre um, uh, carriageway. But you can see here we are um, right next to the station. And so all of the shoulder space um, is being taken up by parked cars. Um, there's going to be a lot of pedestrians around uh, going to and from the, um, to and from the station. Uh, the standard doesn't include a footpath, but a footpath would be highly, highly desirable in this location. Um, also, we've, we've now created this problem with cyclists potentially getting car doored. Um, whereas if we were in another location where we didn't have all these parked cars on the side of the road, uh, you could see that the cyclists would probably be quite happy riding in the sealed shoulder that 1.5 meters over here would be well clear of traffic and wouldn't have any dangers from being car doored or anything like that so this is very much a case where the standard um, isn't really applying to this particular station and uh, situation and if we built the road solely to this standard we're potentially um, creating a road safety hazard